Hi boys and girls. It's so good to be back with you for our chapel. This will be the last chapel that you and I get to be with together. And I just want to say thank you boys and girls for being so attentive and listening really well. We talked about some really hard truths. We talked about who our God was. We answered some really hard questions about God that you boys and girls had. We talked about our words and we talked about kindness and we talked about compassion and gentleness. We talked about generosity, all these characteristics that God wants us to develop. To develop. God also wants us to know him. God wants us to understand the gospel, boys and girls, that, that we are sinners, that we are in desperate need of a savior. There is no way that we could be good enough to get to heaven on our own. There is no way that we could be good enough to please God. The Bible says that all of us, every single one, it doesn't matter if it's your teacher, your parent, your best friend, or the most amazing person, the best person in all the world. The Bible says that all have fallen short of the glory of God. And like sheep, We've gone our, gone our own way and we don't want God's way. And the Bible says because of that, our hearts are desperately wicked. Who can know our hearts? So the only solution we have is recognizing that Jesus Christ is our only hope. He came to earth and lived a perfect life that we could not live, boys and girls. None of us can live a perfect life. And he died on the cross and took God's punishment that I deserve for my sin on himself so that he could do an exchange. Instead of me being punished, he stood in my place and he got punished for me so that I could then take his righteousness and stand before God and glorify God, not because of charity or because of any goodness in me, but because of Christ's righteousness. You see, the gospel calls us to recognize that we need Jesus. He's our only hope for our sin problem. And we go to him and, for, and him alone. It says through Christ alone. And we ask him to forgive us of our sins. And we choose in our hearts to live for Jesus alone. We obey him. We trust him. And we live for him. Boys and girls, if you have not done that, my prayer for you today is that you will talk to a teacher, talk to your parents, but don't go today without making sure that you are trusting in Jesus Christ alone and that, that um, your sin has been covered and paid for by Jesus on the cross. Today, I just want to quickly talk to you about a verse in Proverbs that really encourages me and reminds me to be very careful with what I do. Proverbs 3 verse 7 says, do not do what is wise in your own eyes, but instead it says, fear the Lord and stay away from evil. God says that we need to be very careful, boys and girls, that we do not live according to the way we think, we feel, or we see. If we think we're right just because we feel like we're right, the Bible says, be aware. Don't think you're wise in your own eyes because we're not. That's kind of the meaning there. We're not wise in our own eyes. Only God is wise. But he says this. He doesn't just tell us what we shouldn't do. He says what we should do instead. Instead of doing what is right in our own eyes, we should rather fear God. That means to stand before God in reverence that God is king and we are not. God is holy without sin, and we are tainted with sin. So when we stand before God in reverential fear, has the idea that we recognize God is in control. Maybe like standing before a lion. You know, what would you do if there was a lion in the road or a bear? We would be afraid, but we would respect the, the, the nature of a lion or a bear. We would be very still. You know, we would be careful about how we interacted with it. And that's what God wants with him. Not as though we have to be terrified or afraid all the time. But God is big and holy, boys and girls. And God calls us to rightly relate with him. Relate to him. He is holy and we are not. So we ought to live for God carefully. We ought to be careful to obey his word. We ought to seek what he wants from us in the Bible and learn of him so that we can be really careful to obey him. And he also says not just to fear the Lord, but to stay away from evil. And the idea in the text of the Bible has the idea of stay away from people that are evil. How many of you boys and girls have maybe friends or someone you know that 
sometimes encourages you to do bad things or to not obey. Maybe not obey your mom or dad or to sneak or to hide or, or to talk in class and not obey your teacher. The Bible says, we rather than doing what is right in our own eyes, we, we need to fear the Lord and make sure we stay away from evil or people that cause us to do evil. Boys and girls, we ought to live very carefully before the Lord. But there's a blessing that's attached in, in Proverbs 3 after it talks about um, not doing what's right based upon how we feel, but fearing the Lord and staying away from evil. It says this, then it will be good for you and you will be blessed. How many of you want goodness in your life? Yeah, we want to be happy. We want to be good. We want God to be pleased with us. You see, when we do things God way, God's way, it often is good for us. But let me tell you what, boys and girls, we don't really believe it usually. Usually, I don't necessarily think it's going to be good for me if I have a choice to be mean and ugly to the person that made fun of me because it feels good to me. It's right in my own eyes to retaliate. If someone does something bad to me, it feels good and right to do something bad to them. But God says, no, 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 no. You need to fear me, Charity. Don't just do what is right in your own eyes. You need to fear me. That is the idea that I stop and say, what does God say? I need to be concerned with God right now. And so I, I think about what he says, and I, and I think in my mind that he says, I'm to be kind, even to my enemies, I'm to love them. And so I choose to say, no, I am not going to go the way that charity feels. I'm going to obey God, and I choose to be kind rather than retaliate with anger. Now, I also need to be careful that if I have friends around me that are saying, yeah, get back at that person. They were so mean to you, you get back at them. God says, stay away from the friend or the person that's going to encourage you to do evil. Sometimes we have evil that we want to do because it comes out of us. Other times we have people around us, friends, that, that encourage us to do wrong. And the Bible says, stay away from friends that help you to do wrong. If we do this, God will bless us and we will be happy. If we live before God with fear and we stay away from evil. Boys and girls, two things I want to challenge you with. Obey God. Do what is right. Understand his words so that you can please God. If you do this, it will be well, it will be good for you and you'll be blessed. Do you want to be happy? Obey God. Follow him. Now at times it's hard because it goes against what is right in our own eyes, right? What Proverbs 3, 7 says that or what feels good to us. But we can trust God in his word, boys and girls. The other thing is this. Make sure you choose friends who will help you to do what's right. Stay away from friends that encourage you to do what is wrong. And boys or girls, make sure that you are a friend that is encouraging others to do what is right and not encouraging them to do what's wrong. If you are helping your friends sneak behind their parents' back to do what is wrong, to say bad words, to be unkind, to not obey the teacher or to cheat, boys and girls, we need to be not like that. We need to be encouraging friends. So this summer, Please the Lord, do what is right before him. God promises goodness and blessing to the one who walks according to his ways. I will miss you boys and girls on campus. I hope to see you in person at the beginning of next school year. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.